From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Thank you, Bob Allen, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm going to uh, give you guys some information on what I'm working on. And um, this is actually the first time I'm making this announcement. Many of you know I have directed movies for Shonda Pierce. I did three with Shonda Pierce and also one with Russ Taff. I Still Believe, which, by the way, you can see on Amazon Prime, Russ Taff, I Still Believe. And uh, please go watch it. We could use the support. But on the show, I've interviewed the Kendrick brothers, Alex and Stephen. I've had Stephen on a couple times, Alex on once, a couple times. You've, you've heard him here. And for those of you who don't know who the Kendrick brothers are, they uh, are filmmakers uh, who have made Overcomer, War Room, Courageous, Fireproof, Facing the Giants. They're, you know, I would say the top Christian filmmakers. Well, I had Stephen on the show um, last year, and he was talking, after we were done with our interview, he was talking to me about how much he enjoyed the Russ Taff uh, documentary that I made. And he said, we are wanting to make documentaries, and we really think you would be great to work with us on that. And I went, yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, long story short, uh, I am now directing, uh, writing and directing a movie on fatherhood for the Kendrick Brothers. So that is, uh, you know, kind of big news for me. And here I am uh, on the Rick Altizer show announcing that for the first time. My guest today is the producer of the fatherhood documentary with the, with the Kendrick brothers that we're working on together. And his name is Mark Miller. Mark and I have been spending a lot of time together, uh, kind of putting together, you know, how do you do a documentary? How do you get this going? And what is it going to be about? And I thought, you know, that would make a good show is let's talk about the beginning stages of a documentary. So Mark, Mark Miller is my guest. And Mark, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, Mark and I have been spending lots of time together, haven't we? <laughs> we have, yeah. I, I imagine uh, as much as you can when you're in two different cities. But uh, thanks to internet and television, it makes it or and, uh, phone calls, it makes it pretty easy. Yes, yes, a lot of Skype calls and those kinds of things. Um, yep. So, Mark, uh, talk to me a little bit about how you got involved working with uh, the Kendrick brothers. Sure. Um, well, it's kind of a funny story. I remember a, a mentor of ours years ago used to say that uh, any relationships that we make throughout life, it's always kind of interesting to see how they come back around, you know, full circle. When sometimes we don't even realize it. But uh, over 20 some years ago, uh, I was singing with Stephen and Alex Kendrick in a, a acapella quartet. We did you know, like national anthem for a few sporting events and, uh, sang at our church in uh, the Atlanta area. And, um, yeah, we just enjoyed good fellowship and enjoyed time together, but then, uh, kind of went into a couple of different directions for the next couple of decades. And, uh, just recently this last year, uh, had the chance to use a kind of a little bit of a career change for myself, a little different setting. And, um, uh, they offered for, me and my family to come in here and uh, kind of spend some time searching, see what the Lord has uh, in store next. And then all of a sudden, here I am, uh, we're producing a documentary on fatherhood, <laughs> to make a long story short. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and you know, that's been such a great, what, what an amazing topic, the topic of mm. fatherhood, how Absolutely. we see Father God, how we deal with our own fathers and so many times project that onto God, those traits of our Father, good or bad, yeah. uh, that can yeah. h help us in our walk with God or can hinder us. So let's talk about uh, you know, the beginning stages of putting a documentary together. Um, you know, I will say it kind of started with a conversation that I had with Stephen, and he said, I have these different ideas for doing a docu After we just kind of said, hey, we'd like to see what it would look like if we worked together— he had one on fatherhood, one on uh, parenting, uh, one on do we know, how do we know the Word of God is true, and one on abortion. And so these are some different things he was wanting to do. Um, and I had kind of said, well, I think fatherhood, if I'm struggling with the concept of God because my dad was, you know, so dysfunctional and I'm putting that on God, it doesn't, none of those others really matter 
if I'm completely disconnected from the concept of God, Hmm. So we 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 kind of decided, okay, we're gonna let's do fatherhood. So let's pick it up from there. Um, what what do you do in putting a documentary together? How do you start a documentary? How does how does that work, Mark? Uh, <laughs> I'm still waiting yeah. to find out. So I, I yeah, can't wait to hear what you say. We're, <laughs> I think we're both in a learning process. Uh, you know, it's, documentary is something that I've been interested in for all of my life. I mean, growing up as a PBS junkie and. Uh, you know, several different filmmakers throughout, uh, you just kind of had a chance to study and, and to think about, uh, and everybody has a different approach and there's lots of different ways to come to, uh, the idea of making a film. Sometime I think a film might be born out of, um, a, an interest in a, in an event or uh, a person, you don't really know what the, what the subject is or what the, the point is. And I remember working on a project in India, about 10 years ago where all I knew was there was an interesting connection between a horse and a race of people. That's all I knew. And you know, when you start uh, getting into the settings and visiting with people who are breeding these horses and hearing their stories and all of a sudden you start realizing, oh, there's a, an amazing metaphor here. There's a, a way to tell a story about a, a race or a, a, an ethnic identity and how those people are trying to preserve their identity at the same time trying to preserve this breed of horse. So, I mean, there's just, uh, there's all kinds of different ways to go. I think another way you could start with a subject like fatherhood, and then you got to figure out, okay, how do we, uh, create and craft a story that will communicate, um, the depths and the, and the heart of this subject, which we find is really important. Or maybe we just, you know, we spend time doing research to figure out, uh, what are the aspects of fatherhood that, uh, people really need to hear about. And so, I mean, my job, I think as a producer is, um, just to be kind of gathering anything possible that we can, that I can find and just looking around and what are the different stories? What are the, who else is talking about fatherhood? Are there documents out there? Is there historical moments? Um, and, uh, you know, trying to bring all those things to the table. And then, you know, as a creative team, we will figure out, you know, which, which direction to go. And I think, you know, you've got some amazing history in exploring a subject, uh, with people and individuals and discovering what those stories are. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could talk a little bit about some of that approach from, from your experience as well as things emerge yeah. you know, when, you, when you dive into it. And sometimes, you know, I think a film in the end is, uh, the process of discovering is sometimes the final film can even be the process of discovering what this film is supposed to be about <laughs> in kind of a meta way. Uh, and sometimes those are very interesting, uh, you know, films in, in their own right. So, um, yeah, this, it's an amazing process. There's a guy, uh, Michael Rabinger, who started the, uh, uh, wrote a book called directing documentaries, the founder of the documentary center at uh, Columbia college in Chicago. And I love his description of or definition of documentary film, where he said that a documentary film is the sum of relationships between the crew, uh, the staff, the people who are involved in making it, the subjects of the film, and the audience. And when those three things can come together in a really synergistic, uh, amazing way, uh, that's a documentary film. There's there's a there's an interesting relational connection. And when those things are, are preserved well and, and thought through well, I think it can be a really powerful film. You are listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio. And my guest today is the producer of the new documentary that we're working on together for the Kendrick Brothers on Fatherhood. Mark Miller is my guest today. Mark, again, thanks for being on the show. I'm so, it. yeah, well, you're, you're talking, yeah, you're talking about, uh, as you do a documentary, it's not like a scripted movie where you have lines and, okay, today, uh, you know, Joe, you're going to say this. And then, Betty, you're going to say this back to Joe. And, you're, you know, I want you to stand here when you say it and I want you to say it just like this. I mean, mm -hmm. it's nothing like that. Uh, we can interview somebody and all of a sudden they'll start telling a story, sharing something that we had no idea they were going to share in one case. We had a woman share something that she wasn't even planning on sharing, and the Holy Spirit just kind of moved on her to right. talk about some abuse, physical abuse she'd had in her life. She wasn't even planning on going there. So things happen and 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 go. And even when you when you're doing like as I've like you, you had mentioned, I've done stuff with Shonda, I've done stuff with Russ. So it's about a person. But even in that, we really don't know what's going to happen. The first Shonda movie was just going to be about Shonda Pierce on the road. What's it like being a comedian on the road? 
uh, you know, what's that world look like? And then her marriage was blowing apart. Her daughter was estranged from her. Her husband became an alcoholic. And then as we're filming it, he literally drank himself to death. Hmm. Uh, hmm. So uh, what started out as this movie about this, this on the road with Shonda turned into this other movie altogether. How do you navigate your faith when everything blows up? And those were things that couldn't be scripted. We had no idea. That just kind of how it happened. Then when it was all done, then we put the movie together. So the movie I was going to make when we started it was a completely different concept than what we ended up with. So like with this movie, with, with just about any documentary, you start filming it, you have a concept, an idea, but you really don't know what it's going to be. To you, you kind of have to jump in with both feet and just mm-hmm. get and just go. And, and there is a, a total element of faith involved that something good is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, I, I, gee, I hope this, this works out and, and we have a good movie. And you really don't know till you get going and, and get started. Um, and so then finding a way to find the story that you want to tell. Because with any documentary, there's going to be what we've already done, 13 hours, we did 17 interviews. We've already got enough for four movies now. And we just did one, you know, three days of interviewing. <laughs> and, you know, uh, we're going to do another six months. So there'll probably be, uh, gosh, I don't know, 10 movies we could make. So right. then once you get everything, what's the movie that you do make? So let's talk a little bit about just the uh, where the Holy Spirit kind of has to kind of guide this whole process. And then you mentioned teamwork, too. And then uh, people who hadn't worked together before, learning how to work with each other learning how to find that story and how to do that. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit's involvement and then teamwork, the importance of that. Sure. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, years ago, I remember the Lord really impressing upon me that prayer is the real work. And it's not just a a thing we do on the side or even just to kind of get a stamp of approval on the things that we do. But, uh, you know, we, we commit everything we do to the Lord so that our plans will succeed uh, as the Proverbs say, but, uh, prayer is an essential part of that process. You know, we are leaning on the Holy spirit and the Lord to, uh, really be the producer and the director of this film and this project. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a unique opportunity for us as believers. Uh, God has written amazing stories and he is the best storyteller uh, and so we have a, an incredible privilege to be able to steward things that he has already done. You know, we've been entrusted with this amazingly huge topic of fatherhood and God being our f- heavenly father. Uh, and to be able to tell that well, I think to try to do that in the flesh would be ridiculous and kind of foolish. <laughs> You know, we we really need to lean yeah. in. We really need to lean into uh, God's inspiration and uh, the leading of His Holy Spirit. You know, uh, the Kendricks have always uh, demonstrated that well in all of the films that they have uh, produced already, and I'm really happy to you know be a part of this team uh, now, where we can. You know, one of the initial things that we need to do in a project like this is to build a prayer strategy. How are we going to uh, gather? prayer warriors and other people to join us in prayer and not just to say, Lord, please bless this film, but Lord, please direct this film. God, show us uh, who we should uh, interview. God, show us which uh, events we should attend and what uh, topics, what aspects of God's fatherhood should we portray uh, in, in this film. And that takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of uh, time. And it's sometimes I think in our, in our human sensibilities, it'll feel like we're wasting time. You know, I'm just sitting around praying. I'm not making anything yet, you know, but, uh, if we are patient enough to listen and hear what God wants to, um, speak to us and, and in community, hear from the Lord in community, uh, that's a, that's a way to find an amazing, uh, story that's going to impact the broadest audience possible. Hmm. Amazing. And then you're talking about that community. Then let's talk about the aspect of teamwork. Uh, the, the, the four movies I've made so far, really, I've kind of done everything. You know, I had an editor come in on the back end that, that really helped me. So the very end of the movie, I finally had some collaborative process uh, 
but I didn't really have what I'm having now, which is, you know, from the very get go, this team working together, praying together, thinking together, stuff I can bounce off. I've been sending you edits of things I'm doing, and it's just so wonderful to have this this group of people, this team around me. Let's talk about the importance of a team in doing a project like this and, and having the right team. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love working as part of a team. I mean, to, to do something on your own, uh, seems wrong in a lot of, <laughs> a lot of ways. And God created us to be part of community. Uh, that's an essential aspect of what it is to be a believer. You know, in our, our Western mindsets, often we, we are, prone to do things on our own and with our own power and not to rely on others. But uh, God is interested in seeing us work as a team, as a body. And each one of us brings a different, uh, we are like different parts of a body. We bring different strengths and weaknesses and point of view and histories that we can uh, actually, it can multiply our ability to, to move forward on a project. So, that's one of the things I like about teamwork is that if I learn something and you learn something, we're learning two different things. We actually multiply our own individual knowledge or, or interest or experience in something by uh, pulling all that together. Uh, you know, in, in a brand new team, like where we're right now, we're still kind of getting to know each other and working through these process, building a, a strong foundation of trust uh, is important and being believers uh, that we we know that we are all brothers in Christ, and I think that's a huge start. Like we don't have any ego, we don't have any reason to uh, try to put ourselves out in front of someone else or that sort of thing, because we are all bought by the blood of Christ, and uh, we, we have no intrinsic value of our own except what Christ uh, brings into us, and so uh, that that's a huge. Um, uh, advantage for us, I think, right now in the beginning of this project is having that foundation of a common trust, knowing that we are uh, brothers in Christ and we have that foundation. We can trust each other and uh, to be able to build on that. Um, that's a that's a great privilege. That's a that's a perfect uh, start for a team, in my opinion. Hmm. You're listening to the Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio. My guest today is uh, producer Mark Miller. And together we're working on a uh, new documentary for the Kendrick Brothers on fatherhood. So, uh, okay, so, you know, <clears throat> we're, we're kind of in the beginning stages of putting this together. Can we talk about some of the under-the-hood technical things that we're going to be looking at? You know, what kind of gear we're going to shoot on? Who's going to be our, you know, cameraman? Can we, can we just kind of talk about some of that process and I know we're kind of learning this together as we go, <laughs> you know, yeah. both of us. But what have been some of the uh, the things that have been interesting to you, maybe challenging to you? And what are things just kind of under the hood? Here's what you got to do. If you want to start a documentary, you're gonna, you've got this idea. So to get from idea to actually getting it green-lighted, talk a little bit about some of the things that need to happen in that, in that realm. Hmm. Well, you need money. That's always a, <laughs> a good starting point. Uh, and uh, fortunately, we do, we do have a budget. We have some uh, constraints and guidelines. In a lot of ways, I think that's that's helpful too to have uh, guide rails and a constraint. You know, uh, once you we know those boundaries, then that helps us know what kind of film can we create. So, you know, we're not a multi million dollar budget, and so we're not going to be. Uh, flying helicopters all over the place and doing lots of international shoots and you know that sort of thing but at the same time uh we have uh the ability to go ahead and pursue some you know uh high profile uh, individuals and personalities and we want to be able to tell those stories well you know from a technical standpoint i mean just trying to decide okay what what will we be shooting? Uh, where will we be shooting? And what environments would those be like? You know, interviews are, are one thing. Are we going to have lots of uh, drone footage someplace? Are we going to be doing a, a cinema verite kind of shoot where we need to be uh, run and gun and uh, kind of guerrilla uh, camera work, that sort of thing at a, an environment? Are we doing, you know, a big concert someplace. So we have to be, you know, mindful of uh, those kinds of things as we're going forward, particularly as we're thinking about equipment and who to hire, what kind of uh, director of photography to bring on the project, uh, that sort of thing. So there's, 
uh, yeah, there's a lot of those uh, pieces that are coming together. And right now, as we're exploring the subject and trying to figure out who's the best you know person to bring into the uh, project, who to interview, you know, those are the kind of things we're we're working through right now. And I think we've narrowed down into some uh, some gear and things that will be helpful for us. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing, the first thing you said, budget. I think that's so important is to know what your budget is because uh, that will have so, so many, like you said, give you guide rails to yeah. know what you can shoot on. What kind of cameras can I use? Who can I hire? Yeah. When I did the first Shonda movie, I didn't have a budget, so I did everything. I was you know, starting out filming on autofocus, and yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, went on the road with her and just doing it all myself with no budget. And you can do that. I don't, I don't recommend that. You right. can do that. But that isn't something I would say is, is my favorite thing to do. Uh, right, right. It's much. And so in this situation where there is some budget, where we are able to, I've got a producer now. From, the, from day one, I have a producer who's involved and, and uh, you know, helping me with every decision uh, we've got Stephen, who's very involved and who uh, has a strong vision, strong focus. So that's so nice. But knowing what your budget is really does. Uh, you know, we were talking about: Are we going to get the, the Canon C three hundreds? We're going to use the Blackmagic Cinema camera. We're going to do the Panasonic GH fives. How are we going to film it on? You know, no. uh, so budget really does have a lot of constraints on what kind of cameras you're going to use. How much can we pay somebody each day? How many crew members can we have on a shoot? Yeah. How many interviews we're going to do? Where we're going to do them? Are we going to go? We're going to fly to Indiana, and then we're going to fly to New York. You know, or does everything have to be kind of local where I can drive and get to it? So all those things. I think when when people, if, if there anyone here wanting to make a documentary, thinking about making a documentary, I think budget's kind of like your first thing. And so finding that, finding someone to fund it is uh, is another thing. If say you want to do that's something, right. Finding the money is another uh, story. <laughs> But yeah, I and think then, also, and you yeah, also I would add, to go ahead. I, would, I was going to say I would add a, no, uh, no, no, go ahead. also to that, that you know, beginning with the end in mind is one of my favorite phrases, but any project, you know, thinking about what is the final uh, output going to be? Where are we hoping to see this? We're hoping to see this in theaters, uh, whether in a, a Fathom event kind of thing or, you know, regular uh, theatrical uh, distribution. And so that's going to change also some of the scope and the imagery and things that are going to be portrayed. Whereas if we're doing this just for internet distribution, then things might be, we might be able to shoot things a little bit differently. Uh, or if we're looking for episodic television kind of stuff, we get our uh, broadcast, you know, you got to think about different formats and uh, you know, what those different people require so that we meet those technical requirements in the final piece. Exactly. A Fathom event, you're going to need 250,000 minimum to market it, a film event, oh my gosh, you know, the, the money, then you're going to have to have somebody engage, and that is going to change how you film it. I mean, there are people making documentaries that are good to watch. They're making them on iPhones, you know? Sure. So, well, if you've, if you've yeah, got the content, but, if you've got an amazing story, uh, sometimes the, the format won't matter. But, you know, we want to begin with something that looks beautiful, that sounds excellent, uh, you know, from a get go, and we believe that the story of God as Father is going to be quite compelling, uh, you know, in its own right. So, what I've found in these interviews is that they go so fast; they're just, you know, we're, we've got a minute left. We're almost done. Yeah. This thing just blows through, doesn't it? It's amazing. It I'm yeah. hoping Mark and I, guys, Mark and I are going to be working on this uh, for the whole year. So this will not be the only time I do a show on uh, this documentary. I'll be as we're going. As we're doing, I'll have Mark, I'll have Stephen, I'll have different people on, and we'll, we'll keep talking about this. But, uh, Mark, I, I, it's just been such a pleasure working with you. You're such a godly man, such a great example to me. And, uh, yeah, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, ask people out there who are listening, would you pray for us? Would you be praying? Uh, we're doing a very important documentary on fatherhood uh, and helping people to come to know Father God, who maybe have a father wound in their life. Uh, so could you be praying for this documentary and praying for us, praying for Mark and myself as we make this? And Mark, I just give you the last 30 seconds. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's been a real privilege. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, great to work with you too, Rick. Uh, it's fun to be uh, yeah, in collaboration with others, like-minded people. And uh, all right, so there's going to be more. You guys will be hearing from uh, from Mark and me and more about the film as we come. And Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Thanks again, Mark, for being on the show. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank you.
If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Into the world